how do you think about building cohesion between individual musicians within an ensemble? Yeah, I, so I think, you know, one of the things we talk about in jazz a lot is we have this saying of like people who have big ears, right? Um, not like, you know, Mickey Mouse, but people who, who have very high awareness, right? People who have very high contextual and situational awareness and high team awareness and, and high self-awareness. So when, when, for example, as a musician, when you're playing your instrument, you have to have high self-awareness because you need to know, you know, when whatever techniques you're using to play your instrument, that it's it's sounding right and and everything is coming out the, the way you want it to. But then, of course, you're combining what you're doing with this sound of what everyone else is doing. And you have to be so aware, you have to be listening to that combined sound all the time. Uh, and you also have this have this other contextual awareness of what's happening in the room because you're performing for an audience. And so in order to be connected to that audience, you need to be seeing and listening and watching what's happening out there in the audience and how people are responding. So I think the, the, the thing that really builds the cohesion is, is people who have that, that really high awareness and are not in their own little world. Uh, they're really attuned to what's happening in the rest of the team. And especially when you're doing something like jazz, it's a very real-time activity. You have to have that on all the time, right? Like you can't sort of go to sleep even for a second because you may miss miss things. And and it, it might be something that could be a critical thing that if you missed it, perhaps would would send it off the rails, but it also could just be something that might have made the performance better. Like if one jazz musician played something interesting and was hoping that someone else might take that and respond to it and make something of it. Uh, and it's very much like that in improv comedy, for example, right? You know, someone puts something out there and someone else will take that and they will respond to it and they'll build on it, right? And uh, you have to be really on the ball and, and looking and listening for those things. So I think that that awareness is is really the, the most critical thing in, in building the, the team cohesion. When thinking of cohesion, though, how, how do you also think about organizing musicians to drive creativity? Yeah, yeah. So it's, and, and one of the things that's interesting is that so in jazz, for example, we don't necessarily have the, the, the rigid structure that you have in some other ensembles, right? Like if you go see a, a symphony orchestra, it's, it's very hierarchical in nature. There's a conductor typically, and then, you know, there's different sections of the orchestra and, and each section has a, a principal and an associate principal and, and so forth. And in jazz, the, the leadership is so much more fluid, right? Like it's, you have to have people who are both good at leading and good at following. And one of the things that's interesting is when you watch a jazz performance, sometimes it's hard to actually work out who is the leader uh, at any one point in time. Like someone may organize the performance and someone may decide what they're going to play and someone may uh, count off the tune. Uh, but once the tune begins, once the performance of a song begins, the, the leadership is moving around. Uh, and uh, so there's opportunities for everybody to to you know, provide creativity in, in, into the process. Uh, but of course, they also have to be fairly good. And I think this is the most powerful thing. It's, it's that fluidity being good at both leading and, and following and knowing when to pull back and when, when to take the lead and when, when to follow. Uh, I, I think that that's a, a, a critical thing.